Are you looking for better visual fidelity whenever it comes to your live stream? You want your streams to look more crisp, have smoother frame rates and not look as jumpy and just low quality? If that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place because today we're going to be talking about bitrate, Twitch settings. We're going to be talking about things like OBS settings, your computer performance and all that other stuff that plays a huge part in giving you an amazing and crisp looking live stream on How To Tech. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about video settings and stream settings essentially for Twitch whenever it comes to OBS and your live stream. We're gonna cover all that stuff over at the computer, so let's just go ahead and jump over there. All right, so now we're over the computer, let's go ahead and talk about all this stuff. But before we really jump into that, I wanna mention there are timestamps down below because we're gonna talk about a quite a few different settings, the importance of them and maybe some things you might want to jump back around to. So I've left that in the description down below. So check that out if you are interested. And before we get into all of the custom settings, we're going to talk about something a little bit different, which is the auto optimization wizard. So this is going to be really helpful if you don't want to mess with all these settings or if you, for whatever reason, need to set up a live stream really quick and you feel like this might work well for you, it's something you can do. So go to the tool section inside of OBS, auto configuration wizard, and then optimize it for streaming. And then go through here. Things like FPS and resolution are gonna kind of be like, you know, I'm not sure use either or, and you can kind of do that through here as well. Now, things like the resolution, you may not be able to push certain resolutions. And that's kind of why we're talking about the custom um, settings because sometimes you may want to go for a lower resolution at a higher frame rate, depending on what you're doing. And if that's something you don't know, um, stick around because we're gonna be covering all that stuff in just a second. So let's minimize this and let's talk about why custom settings will be better because you can really just dial in the settings and the quality for the hardware specific stuff that you have. So for example, not all computers are created equally. If I buy a very cheap laptop at Walmart for like $300, it's not going to perform near as well as my custom built desktop that I've been upgrading for like the last four or five years. It's not gonna do as good. I've put a lot of money into this computer. It should do better. It depends obviously on the configuration and the stuff that you have and what you're trying to do. But just keep in mind, hardware specific stuff, um, the current games that you're playing could vary if you're playing really demanding games or if you're just, for example, kind of doing what I'm doing right now and you're just streaming a screen and say your face it might not be as hard, but it, it just depends on that and also your internet. All those things play a big factor into this and that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanna explain this because I feel like I've done, I know I've done videos like this before. I feel like the thing that confuses people the most is bit rate and not understanding that sometimes, you know, maybe you actually choose your frame rate before you choose your bit rate and your resolution because that honestly is something that I've seen a problem with a lot of streamers and we're going to actually just go ahead and jump into that now. So let's get started. Let's figure out what frame rate you wanna use for your live stream. I've got some notes over here because I really don't wanna miss any important information that I feel like needs to be conveyed. So I apologize if you see me look off screen. I could memorize this, but this video would take like 10 times longer and take like a week longer to get to you. So let's talk about the difference between frame rates. Here for Twitch, we're gonna be typically streaming at 30 or 60 FPS. Now, Twitch does have the ability for you to stream at uh, different frame rates, such as 25 or 50. If you're noticing that um, the game you're playing is a little bit easier for your computer to encode or upload that for your live stream using those frame rates, then by all means, try those out. But we're gonna be pretty much sticking to 30 and 60 just for this explanation because I feel like this is very important. So 30 FPS is going to be better for something like this of where I'm just browsing stuff on my computer and I'm showing you guys stuff. Maybe we're watching some videos and reacting together. There's not a lot of stuff, not too much movement. Um, a webcam, there's not gonna be too, too much movement. 60 FPS is gonna be great for fast paced games or any stream with a lot of motion. So if I was live streaming outside and I could stream 60 FPS and I was walking around with my camera, that's gonna look a lot better than if I was doing it at 30 FPS. And say you playing Call of Duty, Apex Legends, Counter-Strike or anything like that, it's gonna look a lot better at 60 FPS than 30. And 
here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Dropping your resolutions down to meet that higher frame rate for those games to be less jumpy and be more smooth is going to typically look better at that lower resolution than say 1080p at 30 as opposed to 720p at 60. So that's something to keep in mind and this is what you need to figure out first. Are you gonna be playing something with a lot of movement or are you just gonna be sitting in front of a camera and you can go for a lower frame rate? Determine that. Um, I don't typically see any downside from streaming at 60 FPS. If you've got really fast internet and a really good computer and whatever you're doing can handle it, go for 60. If not, drop it down to 30 um, or maybe think about changing your resolution. So now let's talk about what's been on the screen the whole time because we're talking about Twitch today and there are a lot of things that really kind of play a factor into this. And like I said, first, we want to really determine what our frame rate is going to be. And then this is going to let us kind of determine these other things. We're gonna be referencing this um, after we do a speed test for our computer because our internet is the next big thing. Um, we wanna really determine that we can push whatever bit rate we're gonna to try to push or we're gonna drop frames like crazy and you don't wanna do that. So yeah, we've got two different options here. We'll talk about the different encoders in just a second, but I will have this link down below so you guys can check that out once you determine or start looking into what your computer is possibly capable of. So now let's determine what our internet is capable of. To do so, I actually prefer Google Fiber Speed Test. The main reason why is Google servers are used for a lot of stuff. Um, now, Amazon is the one that owns Twitch, so I would assume all their stuff goes through AWS servers, but I really just like Google Fiber Speed Test. Feel free to use whatever. I'll also link this down below. So go ahead and start your speed test. And for the most part, your download speed means nothing whenever it comes to live streaming. It could be a little useful for you playing like video games and other stuff like that, but your upload speed is what matters the most here because this is what the bit rate that we're setting for our live stream is gonna actually be. It's gonna be based off of this. So let's jump into the common misconception a lot of people have had with some of the other videos that I've um, made on live streaming in the past. If your internet speed, for example, mine is 22.9, let's just say mine was 22 megabits per second. So let's go ahead and throw into this conversion calculator for those of you that might not know that. Um, 22 is 22,000 roughly kilobits a second. And that is what they are referencing here, 22,000. So that would be a lot more than 6,000. Do not waste all of your upload speed on um, just your Twitch stream. You're going to see diminishing returns on anything over six, and it might just make your stream harder to encode and decode on Twitch's side, which might actually screw with your stream and not make it play back near as nicely for your viewers. Twitch recommends six, try six. Um, you might see a little bit better of maybe going to six, 6,500 or maybe even seven, but just keep that in mind that trying to blow this number out of the water is not going to make your stream look better. Twitch still compresses stuff. Yeah, your encoder is going to compress stuff, sending it up to the internet. That is not going to fix um, or make your stream much better. Getting these settings dialed in perfectly um, for your use case is what's gonna make that look better. One other thing that I wanna mention that comes to this internet stuff, and that's very important, is let's say we were wanting to stream at say 1080p and we see that 1080 60 is giving us 6,000 kilobits a second, and we're streaming, say, something like Call of Duty, and we've got a lot of movement on the screen. Um, but let's say our internet speed is actually six megabits a second on our upload, right? That's 6144, roughly, on our um, internet speed there in kilobits a second. And we could see that we would barely have any internet left on our upload speed to stream at 1080p 60 FPS. This is a problem, especially if you're doing things like playing games or using voice or video chat clients like Discord while you're streaming. Um, if you don't leave room for these other programs, they will still try to take that internet speed as well on your upload and it will cause you to lose frames on your stream. So if you were getting six megabits a second on your upload and you need a higher frame rate, I would suggest streaming at 720p 60 FPS because that's still gonna give you a little bit more internet to use those other clients. That is something that is very important that I see a lot of people just like, I'm gonna use all my upload. 
you're going to have a bad time if you use your computer for anything else or anybody else is on your network. If somebody is browsing the internet, you're going to see problems. So try to keep that in mind. Give a little bit of a buffer in there. I can't tell you exactly what that would be. It just depends on your use case and who all's using the internet and what all other programs you're using while you're live streaming. So now let's determine exactly for you guys what settings you want to use. So we have two different options here for our encoder. We have NVIDIA NVENC specs and X264 specs. X264 is, I think, pretty common for just any computer and OBS. So if you're using OBS, you can use X264. It's just gonna use your processor to encode that. Now, if you have a graphics card and say a laptop or even a desktop, you might have what's called NVIDIA NVENC encoder. The NVIDIA NVENC encoder is specific to NVIDIA GPUs. Those would be like GTX or RTX, um, 1030, whatever series graphics cards. And what that is gonna allow you to do is put this processing, take it from your CPU and put it on your graphics card. And it's gonna actually do it a lot better with a minimal performance hit to your computer. So use those to determine um, what settings you wanna go with. For the most part, the only thing it's gonna change is these bottom two settings from what I understand. It's just gonna be the preset and B frames um, is different to the preset and the profile. So just keep that in mind. That's something you may want to look for if you're using NVIDIA or something you may want to look for if you're using X264. X264, once again, is going to have a bigger hit on your performance of your computer. So keep that in mind. So now that we've determined which encoder to use, it's as simple as taking what are you capable of doing and what frame rate you should be streaming at. So if you're gonna have a lot of movement, go with 60. If you're not, maybe you can go for 30 and determine what is the best resolution you can get without causing too many problems with your upload if you're using other programs. Now, this is the part where everybody just gets irritated because they start testing stuff and they get mad. They get mad because they're like, just tell me what to do. And the problem is that there's thousands of people that want to know these settings and I can't tell everybody what settings to use because it really just depends on your computer. So with that being said, here's what I suggest. Figure out which one you really want to stream at and you think your computer can handle and what your internet speed can handle. Now, with that being said, your computer is the next thing that's going to play a big factor, even if your internet can handle it. So keep that in mind. For me, I can actually do 1080p 60 FPS. So I'm going to pull this up here on the side and then I'm going to pull OBS over here on this side. And we're going to find the NVIDIA 1080p 60 FPS specs and I'm going to have those on this side. Now I will go to my settings. And the first tab we wanna to go to is our video tab and make sure our resolution is set correctly for our monitor. My monitor down here is, my main monitor is 1080p. So I would set that as my base canvas resolution. Um, you're gonna set that as whatever your monitor is or whatever specifically you wanna stream at. If you have say a 1080p monitor and you need to stream at 720p, set your base canvas uh, resolution to 1080p and use a downscale filter um, of 720p. So that would be 1280 by 720. Do that. Um, that's going to make sure that you don't have run into too many problems there. Um, the downscale filter just depends on how good your computer is. The bilinear, which is the fastest, it's kind of blurry for the downscaling, but it's the less computer intensive, um, resource intensive. So I like to use Bicubic. Um, but since I'm going to be streaming at 1080p and my monitor's 1080p, there's going to be no downscaling there. So that doesn't actually come into play. My frame rate, I'm going to set to 60. And then I am going to go to the stream tab. Now, Twitch does have the ability to just go ahead and link an account. You can use um, connected account or you can use a stream key. I like to use a stream key. There's that go ahead and make sure you connect that. Um, our output tab is where we're gonna want to start making our changes. So we've got a streaming tab and then we've got our encoder and then our bit rate. So there's some advanced stuff in here for things like VOD tracks and stuff. We're not really gonna worry about that. Um, I don't think that's important. We may mess with the encoder uh, preset in just a second. So. I'm going to look at what my bitrate is over here since I'm using the 1080p 60fps. It says I need to use 6,000 uh, 6, kilobits per second. So all I'm going to do is change this to 6,000. So 6, 1, 2, 3, 6,000. 
And then we have the encoder set to NVENC and you can see the other ones up there. Um, I could still use my CPU if I wanted to, but I want to prefer to use my graphics card. The audio bit rate is kind of your preference. If you wanted, if you're using something with a lot higher quality audio, you could see um, what those are capable of um, and maybe see if you can get a little bit better audio out. Um, we're going to enable the advanced encoder settings and it's already set to actually preset of quality. Now we don't see the ability to adjust things like B frames. This is something that's not that big of a deal and you could probably just not even check this box and click apply and stream and have no problems. Now, for those of you that want to be advanced, we can click the advanced button and we could really dive into some settings. So we can see that we can set our bit rate to CBR and then we could do 6,000 here and our keyframe intervals, which is gonna be two seconds. And then our preset is gonna be quality profile would be high, um, but it doesn't, it's not actually asking for that. It's just asking for max B frames two. So for those of you with multiple graphics cards and maybe you wanna use one card for encoding and one card for gaming, you can do that there. But for us, we're just gonna leave our GPU on zero because that's all we got is one graphics card. So zero is actually number one. We could go through here and set up our recording settings and our audio settings here as well. This is just going to specify which track we're pulling from and the rest of the settings you pretty much don't have to touch. All right, so we've got all of our settings done. What do we do? Do we just go ahead and live stream now? No, no, don't do that. Go ahead and go over to twitch.com or twitch.tv. Why did I say dot com? Twitch.tv, create a new account. If you don't already have a secondary account, you need one. It's amazing for testing your live stream settings. Um, if you get a new microphone, a new webcam, and you want to see how stuff looks and tweak it out a little bit on live stream, um, you could try it that way without bothering the people that are already following you or subscribing to you and going live four or five times while you're trying to dial in your new bit rate or your settings for your camera or your new microphone. Um, it's going to help you out a lot that way of where you don't bother the, those people. And whenever you're ready to go live stream on your main account, it's just going to look like you went from uh, this to like, wow, you went from 720p to 1080p because you bought a new computer and you didn't do like 10 test streams of you figuring out those settings. Like it's just instant upgrade. It makes you look more of a professional and it helps you become one because you actually don't feel bad about going in and dialing in all of those settings and figuring out what's going to make your stream look the best. So all right, guys, it's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead, destroy that like button, get subscribed, turn on notifications for future videos and all of that cool stuff. If you want to be like these lovely people that are on screen right now, then maybe think about becoming a member today to get early access to videos, discounts on merch, community only posts, emotes and a bunch of other cool stuff. So big thanks to everybody for supporting us through memberships and for everybody for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.